or any kind of presentation because I feel that since I got in this industry in 1997 and started my business, that I've had so many experiences, I should be able to stand up here and run my mouth for 20 minutes. So I tried a little something different. So please bear with me and hopefully you guys have a good time. Um, what a great speech. Uh, once again, another round of applause for Mr. Tim Byer, please. <laughs> my name is Dion Bush. Um, I used to repair machines in the 19, uh, starting in 1986 for Reseda Janitorial for Mr. Rubin. And from that moment, I saw so many guys come in the store. And I remember saying, wow, man, I'm listening to these guys over and over again, over and over again. They're coming in with different stories. They always had something new. And I would listen to the income these guys were making. I go, wow, this guy said he was on a job for about an hour and he made 250 bucks. Last I checked, people worked all week to bring in that kind of money at that year that I was in the industry, um, repairing machines. What caught my attention is when I got out of high school, I was told you had to be a doctor, you had to be an attorney, you had to be a school teacher, police officer to make a, diff, a, a decent living out there uh, in this world. I was never told that you could be a carpet cleaner. In fact, I was laughed at um, being a carpet cleaner. Um, a good friend of mine at that time told me I was a, what are you doing, you're washing toilets. You know, I took it as a bad insult. I didn't say anything back to him. He said, go out and get a real job. That's what he told me. Uh, that was the end of our friendship. I mean, seriously, it really was. It was the end of our friendship. In fact, I went out, I started renting a portable from my janitorial shop, the one I used to work at. And I went over to a gentleman who's a dear friend of mine today, and I said, Richard, I would love to get my first machine and own it. I'm tired of renting it. This works. I clear what I'm making, and I'm making hundreds of dollars a day, and I'm new in the business. What do I have to do? Uh, Mr. Richard White is sitting here now today. I appreciate the fact he drove up from Los Angeles to uh, watch me today. He's been a, a mentor of mine for about 20 years now. Um, I have lots of friends out here today. In fact, I want to share a story with you guys. Everywhere I go, I get the question, Dion, when did you start? How do you have so much information? I heard you've helped this guy. I heard you've helped, you've helped, I heard you've helped that guy. I heard you helped this company in this company, in this different state. Why are you traveling all over the world? What are you doing, man? What's wrong? You're not even getting paid for it. I started out doing it simply to help at first. I swear to you, I just was helping. I would fly into Colorado, help a guy in Colorado. I go, why? Who cares? You know, I'm doing well. I want to help another guy out. What made me start doing this is that in this business here, in this business, we have a lot of people that used to say, oh man, that guy, he thinks this is his area. He thinks this is my area. You stay out of my area. They're always fighting and bickering. You guys know, I don't have to tell you the stories. A lot of fighting and bickering in this industry. I wanted to put a stop to it. I wanted something different. So what I did is I came up with an alliance. I said, you know what, why I can't start a union? Let me go help this guy, help that guy, and I want him to appreciate that and help another guy in our business. And people, once again, Dion, when are you gonna get paid? Ah, don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the money. I'm just gonna fly out there. I just met this guy in New Orleans. He wanted me to come out and help him get his business started. The reason these guys were asking for my help is because like Tim and a lot of other people in the room here, I had a marketing background. I naturally knew how to market. I had my own ideas. Usually the ideas that people said wouldn't work, worked for Dion Bush. When people told me I couldn't walk around that grocery store parking lot, guess what Dion Bush did? I walked around the grocery store parking lot. When the security told me to leave, I'd come right back in an hour and start giving out my cards again. <laughs> people would say, Dion, how can you do this, man? Isn't that against the law? No, it's not. You know, all they can do is tell you to leave. The reason I'm bringing this up, ladies and gentlemen, is because everyone's biggest thing is, hey, when I first get into business, I don't have the money to go out there and pay for all this expensive marketing. $20 box of cards is all you need. Go to your nearest print shop, get your box of cards, and walk around. It's that simple. Don't be afraid to go to your car, get your box of cards, and similar to this, my little writing pad here, don't pay me no mind. Sorry about that. This is how I built my business. These cars go wherever Dion goes. No matter who I see, 
No matter where they are, there are no rules and no limits. Hello, ma'am, if you ever need your carpet clean, give me a call. Hello, sir, if you ever need your carpet clean, give me a call. These things work. It may sound simple, but to some people, they say it can't be that easy. It is. Guys, you don't have to go out there and look for the big internet marketing guys. They're out there, and there's some good ones. I know some of them. You don't have to go out there and go to Yellow Book, Yellow Pages, spend thousands of dollars. I want to help the guys who do not have. I want to help the guys that need a start, a healthy start, without spending a fortune. If you want that start, give me a call. But it's this simple. I'm giving you the remedy right now. You cannot be lazy in this business. As we all know, we sweat all day long in this industry. Everybody's a carpet cleaner. If you don't sweat, let me know now, because I don't believe you. <laughs> um, we sweat from sun up to sun down. However, if you want to increase your business, it's not that difficult. Go to the nearest grocery store, give out cards. I want to share another story with everyone here. When I got in the business, I was told that if you do not have a truck mount, you'll never make it. Dion, you got to get a truck mount. I was told that was 100% for sure, for certain. Wasn't true. I started with a portable. In fact, I didn't buy my first truck mount. A lot of people don't believe this, but it is the truth. I didn't buy my, purchase my first truck mount until three and a half years ago. 20 years, three and a half years with the truck mount. All of my vans, all five of them have two guys per truck with portables. I was told I couldn't do it. That's always music to my ears. Everything that you can't do, you can do. You don't have to go out there and spend $60,000 on a big package. Go out there and get you a $1,500 portable from one of the companies that are in this room in here. Get you a $20 box of cards and go for it. You don't have to hire a big marketing assistant. It's unnecessary. I don't have a, I, when I started, I didn't have $80,000 to pay a guy to go out there and walk around and, and do marketing for me. So I did it on my own. Please, when you give out the cars, don't try to sell them anything. I've had a couple guys, very few guys in the industry say, hey, people are telling me I'm selling them, I don't want to be bothered. You're not selling. Keep it simple, two seconds. Hello, sir, if you ever need your carpet clean, give me a call. Hello, ma'am, if you ever need your carpet clean, give me a call. As fast as you can turn around outside of that local grocery store, whether it's Kroger, Ralph's, whatever's in your community or your city, that's all it takes. Back to the portable story. The reason I went with portables in this industry when everyone told me I had to have a truck now is because in living in Los Angeles, we have a lot of high rises. I didn't want to be limited to one machine and limited to certain types of jobs that I could or could not do and perform right on the spot. My portable can go on the 35th floor. I don't know about your truck mount though. Good luck. That's how I look at it. Those guys were leaving money on the table. So all the guys that were laughing at me, I was laughing back at them because I was over there getting all the money in Santa Monica, Wilshire, Ventura Boulevard, downtown Los Angeles on the 50th floor. I do all of the attorney's offices, but they don't. So I want to show you, everyone here that you don't have to be the largest guy. You don't have to start with thousands of dollars. My main focus is helping people with business techniques at a low cost. It is doable. It's very doable. When you're at a job and you're a one-man operation, one of the things I like to point out is a lot of guys don't answer their phone. <laughs> How can you go and work so hard to get clients, so hard, and have the nerve to not answer the phone? I find that kind of funny. If you work so hard, whether you paid someone or you went and did the foot patrol and got the clients, you must answer the phone. It's a disrespect to the client that you went out there to meet. You wasted your time. When I go out and walk around for an hour or two at, at the end of my day, as I do still, I still do it. The last thing I'll do is not answer the phone. The reason I brought this box with me today is I want to give this away. This is a headset. It's the best headset. I'm not kidding you. When you use it, you'll see why it's out there and truck drivers use it. It is hands down the best headset made. I wear that thing religiously on my head. 
I have, I'm going to step on over here, excuse me, sir. Here's mine. So I'm not just telling you. I was answering it up until the moment they called us up over here because the business doesn't stop. When I'm on road trips with my family, I am answering my phone and my children are sitting right here in the second row. They'll tell you the same. I answer my phone at all times because I put a lot of time of energy and thoughts and sleepless nights to make that phone ring. There's guys I call around Los Angeles, they don't even answer their phone at 12 noon. Figure that out. I call some of my good friends in Louisiana, Montana, same thing. I don't get it. You must answer the phone. I'm gonna pick on Johannes Joseph here. When I met Johannes Joseph from Children Carpet Care, sitting in the second row on this side, he called me and he heard my machine running. He met me through a, a website source that I'd rather not name at this point, but I'm sure you guys can figure out who that is. He said, hey, I just wanna know why are you on top? How do you get there? What are you doing that's different? Tim was right, you must do things that are different. I feel if I wanna be the best in the industry, I can either be like Michael Cooper on the Lakers, or I can be Magic Johnson and be a Hall of Famer. You gotta figure out where you fit in. Do you wanna be an ordinary player or do you wanna be a superstar? I wanna be the best, the superstar. Everything I do, I want it to go straight to the top. However, I believe in helping people. When I have, the, what are you laughing at? I'm gonna pick on you, man. This guy's funny. What's your name, sir? Kire. 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 All right, Kire. okay, nice. We'll talk afterwards. I'm gonna get you one of my books. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings up my next point. I'm so proud, I'm so proud today. If I don't win the contest, that's fine. You know, because that's a lot of good men. I know all of them, uh, they're great men. It's not about the competition. The same thing that I preach, and I like to practice it, I mean, straight out. It's not about the competition, it's about the experience, the name of the show. Today, I'm, I'm excited because this is my first book I ever wrote. This is it, right here, it's called The Blueprint. I named it The Blueprint and I kept it a secret. No one knew until I just said, not even my closest friends knew the title. I put all of my years of all of the good and the bad into this book the good and the bad. That's what makes you more solid. You have to have bad experiences, people. Sometimes you will not have success in a way that you feel it should be progressing. Sometimes you have to have a bad year or two. That's okay, take a step back, take another step forward. Take a step back, take two steps forward. I'm not gonna sell this book, I'm gonna give away five of these books, and I'm gonna let those five people tell everyone else how good the book is. If you want the best business book out there, it's, the, it's definitely the blueprint. When I got into the industry and I bought my first truck mount years later, I used the truck mount. I like it. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you it's, it's no good. I, I like it. I'm used to the portable. My guys are used to the portable, all 10 of my guys. They'd rather not use it. I'm the only guy to this day that uses a truck mount in my truck. Um, all of my other guys use portables. One thing I like to point out about, about this business that when you are out there in the field and you're looking for guys, this is a, a little secret I'm gonna give you guys. People always say, well, how do I find these carpet cleaning techs? How do I find these guys? Where are they at? Who wants to clean carpet? Do I go to Craigslist? Do I put an ad out there in the newspaper? What do I do? Here's what I do. I find them naturally. I talk to guys. In my company, I hire people that do not work for other carpet cleaners. I don't want you coming to McDonald's telling me about how you did it at Burger King. That wasn't my thing. I always hire someone who had no carpet cleaning experience. That may sound a little weird to some of you, but I don't have all the problems that most people have with their carpet cleaning guys. It's like poison. I don't want a guy who does it, I'm gonna train him to be my way. Anyways, guys, um, <laughs> this is kind of awkward to me. I've never done this before. So I wanna tell you, when you go to 
Uh, the next thing I'd like to point out is marketing strategies again. Marketing, if you do not want to give out the cards, you don't have to give out the cards. Another source is you have guys that uh, they do web design for you if you, just, if you can't do it yourself. I think everyone should have a web page. A lot of guys don't. When you, I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys, please forgive me. I'm dropping the ball here. Um, I'm sorry. This is, what, hey, this is what happens when you don't write a speech, right? I had to try it, you know? Anyways, another thing I like to point out is when you go out there, give it all you got. Give it all you got. Put your heart behind it. I love this industry. My children were raised in this industry. All of them work for my company. They all have their own work shirts. As they said, the youth, if we can't keep it going if we don't regenerate. We have to bring our kids in it. Bring your neighbor's kids in it. Bring your grandchildren in it. Bring somebody in it so it can grow. We must do that. I know a lot of the guys that I'm looking at out there. I have a lot of friends out there. Introduce them to it. Show them how it works. Don't be afraid to help another person. And in your, in your town, if you live in the smallest town and you have another carpet cleaner, please find you someone in your community, network with them, not against them. Join forces. Join forces. Find somebody, I don't, I'm talking to the small guys. I know some of you guys are millionaires, that's okay. I'm talking to the small guys right now. I'm talking to the guys who need a little bit of help. The guys who don't mind making only a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. I'm talking to those guys. Go out there and network with someone else. Go out there and meet a group. I formed the first alliance in our industry. It's called the Carpet Cleaning Academy slash Carpet Cleaning Alliance, which is a union and not a union for employees. It's a union for all of the owners. Right now we're up to, I believe, 19 members, your months. 19 members we have, 19 different companies around Los Angeles come to our meetings once a month. These meetings are very beneficial to everyone. If I have a big building that's 40,000 square feet, which I have had, I called five companies, all the portables, because we couldn't get a truck mount inside. They all put on my shirts, make my company look bigger. We came in with three trucks and 14 men, right? 14 men and we got that job done all on the same day. Sounds good to me. That's one of the benefits to having an alliance out there and not being on your own. It's very important and it can be beneficial to you. Um, is there anybody who have any questions at this time? And anything they'd like to add, ask or anything? Okay, cool. With that said, I want to say this. Get the book. Yes, sir. How do we get one of your five books? How, you just got one. Santiago, nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. I get, I guess, but what about for the ones that we don't get? What are the five? The books will, will be for sale out there. Pick up a copy, twenty bucks. It's a lifetime of stuff inside the book. It's an A to Z business operation. If you want to know the blueprint, that's the book. If you feel it's not, find me between now and Friday and hand it back to me. I can guarantee that it's in the, everything you need to know is in that book. Yes, sir. Um, I'm a live, a living testimony that is Operation Works. I started with nothing. Can you stand up? Here? Started with, with a portable. I've been here four years now. Um, and I just have to attest to the hard work that he has put in. And I appreciate everything you've done for me and these other guys as well. And I'm telling you guys, it works. It really works. Started off with a $60 investment, business cards, and I have them right here. Still to this day. <laughs> it works. Thank you. I appreciate that, Sean. Yes, sir. Why do I like this headset over others? That's a good one. This headset, I tried everything there was in the industry, including the little sun visor speakers. And this headset is a real noise cancellation. So when I'm out there cleaning carpet, the reason I brought that up, a lot of guys say, well, I didn't answer the phone because I was in front of a customer. I don't understand that. I answer my phone all day long. 
With that, guys, I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming down. <laughs> and have a good, uh, enjoy the rest of the day. All right. And uh, you kids, be very proud of your dad. Very, very proud of your dad. I'm going to have to kiss you. Absolutely. Your dad's trying to lead by example for you guys. All right, any comments from our judges? Um, I'll let the lady go first. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Well, I'm going to Wonderful job. It's hard to get up there and talk to everyone, but you did a wonderful job, and you're very intriguing and inspirational. And I do, obviously, have one more question for you. Uh, what was your biggest hurdle or your largest hurdle when building the brand of Dion? And how did you overcome that hurdle? The biggest hurdle was probably family, friends. I want to say friends. It was really hard because I expected, just say all of you guys were my friends, I expected all of my friends to utilize my services over the years. And it was really upsetting and hard for me to overcome the fact that they didn't see me as a professional. I think that was my biggest hurdle and biggest hurt in the industry during the years. They would, I, I would go visit, hey, who cleaned your carpet? Oh man, I just had Stanley Steamer run over it. And it was like a slap in the face. And I used to go, what do I have to do to show them? I guess family and friends always believe, oh, that's just little Dion. I've been doing it for years. You're never professional to your loved ones. It's kind of weird how that happens. They overlook you for the other people out there. And it's, and I, I, I think that was my biggest hurdle. It was my biggest hurdle. Great, thank you. Dion, you're uh, speaking to uh, everyone in this room started at zero. I can promise you we all did the parking lot uh, speech. And so I really affirm what you are talking about because 35 years ago, that would have been my story. Um, there's some great successes. There's some great passion that you have. And I know we just got a tip of the story. So I appreciate you bringing it into 20 minutes. I'm sure you could lecture on this for days. Uh, I like your idea of alliance. I think that's pretty outstanding. Uh, you really are bringing people together. I think that's very unique. That's the first time I've heard that. Uh, I also see that uh, we are needing some good candidates running for president, so I would maybe <laughs> consider that in four years. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Dion, I just got to tell you that the, there's two words that come to mind when I was listening to you speak because um, I, I, I do coaching and consulting for the cleaning and restoration industry and do training. And there are a lot of excuses thrown around out there why things aren't going well. They can blame it on the economy, they can blame it on not being able to find good people, they can blame it on the fact that marketing is too expensive. Uh, what you've just done and in the, uh, uh, the style that you did. Um, helped us to understand that there are no excuses. Those are the two words that came to mind. There are really no excuses out there. So you got to look within, and, and that's what hit me with this. The only thing I would uh, like to see uh, you do in the future, which you, you said yourself, um, it's kind of hard for, for the audience to, to follow you if we don't know where you're going. So if you could, at the beginning, maybe tell us where you're going, what your, what your subject is, uh, so that we can kind of get in that groove and head in the same direction with you. Uh, probably an outline would have helped to bring the train in the station a little bit more smoothly, but I think you, you way overwhelm that with your style, with your enthusiasm, with your subject matter, so I really appreciate it. Great job. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good job. Okay, our next speaker is Mr. Jake Ness. Jake, come on.